Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Elliot. Um, I'm presenting today with Prakuthi. She'll come up here in a few minutes. Um, we're going to talk today about um, adding a third-party hypervisor to the Android virtualization framework. Um, so this is going to kind of be a overview of what AVF is, what Ganya is, and then what's going on just as a status update. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, Android, Android virtualization framework um, is a fairly new framework. Um, we're trying to add new protected uh, virtualization use cases. Um, so there's a lot of things in firmware, um, some use cases that Android apps want to sort of move out of sort of main Android uh, into an isolated use case. Um, and so we have Android has a new framework for that. Um, David gave a great talk about that last year. Um, definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, so Qualcomm's been using uh, Ganya now for how many years has it been? Do you know? Five years? Four years? Okay. Four years. Um, it's, a, it's an EL2 hypervisor. It's a small microkernel. Um, and we have a resource manager VM that sort of uh, manages access to um, all the vCPUs and, and memory management um, for VMs. Um, and so you have Android that goes to talk to either the hypervisor or the resource manager um, to do different virtualization stuff that you want to do. Um, so some key design differences from other hypervisors. Um, we designed it from the beginning to be for VM isolation. So we see a lot of other hypervisors are sort of adding that in later. Um, we started from the beginning to have deprivileged VMs. Um, you can read all these other different things. Um, we had EL2 based scheduling as well. Um, and one other important thing is Qualcomm has other business units besides just mobile and wearable. We also want to support our auto and IoT use cases. Um, so that's one reason why uh, we have our own um, hypervisor. Um, so here's a pretty brief rundown of some hypervisor requirements for AVF. Some of these are going to be pretty basic. Uh, you need to be able to launch a virtual machine. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, one other thing that seems pretty simple for upstream community but was a little bit different for us, uh, you need to be, be able to handle MMIO access from uh, vCPUs. Um, Ruth, you'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, shutdown support, um, these VMs are going to be restarting. Um, you need to have some of the essential Arch-specific devices like interrupt controllers and timers. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what supporting protected VMs means. Um, but in essence, there's memory isolation. Uh, you need to make sure that the VM is what you think it is and uh, that somebody else can say, yeah, what that VM did is uh, the right VM that that did that. Um, so attesting that you were loaded by the right person. Um, so a little bit about protected mem memory isolation. Um, so there's a lot of memory uh, that these VMs use that we don't want uh, Android to be able to access. So uh, this memory gets lent from the VM. Um, and this diagram here is just trying to show, uh, oh, you can't see the grid. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, so just different scattered memories, regions uh, get mapped into the guest memory and are no longer accessible to the host. Um, and there's a mix and match of that memory. There's some memory that is shared uh, with the host for um, things like board IO buffers. Um, so some additions we had to do to AVF to support Ganya. Um, so there's two primary components that live in user space and kernel. Um, so the user space component is called CrossVM. That's the virtual machine manager. Um, if you're familiar with Kimu, it's vaguely similar to Kimo. If you're familiar with um, KVM tool, I think is the other one um, that folks may be familiar with. Um, so we do need to add a new hypervisor crate uh, for Ganya um, to use our Ganya driver uh, that lives in Linux. Um, in, in Linux, um, we've been trying to upstream all of our changes to kernel.org first. Um, those patches are still very much work in progress, but um, you know we're tre treating that as kind of our top priority. Um, and this driver abstracts all the communication to um, the Ganya. Um, yeah. Your turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, continuing with the changes we had to make, uh, we had some enhancements in Ganya itself. Uh, we now support host only device emulation, stolen time accounting for the VM. Uh, we also now execute PVM firmware before we actually run the protected VM or AVF. Um, 
along with that, to uh, establish a chain of trust, uh, we have changes in the bootloader being the root of trust. Uh, the bootloader loads the PVM firmware, verifies the firmware, and attaches a boot certificate chain to it. Ganya, when requested to run the protected VM, it first loads this PVM firmware with the BCC, and then the execution moves on to protected VM. Um, in this um, Android 14 use case of uh, isolated compilation, uh, Microdroid, Microdroid basically compiles and signs the apexes and stores it in the storage. And on reboot, the whole flow repeats. And then Microdroid uses the BCC uh, to actually verify the Apex, compiled Apex, and then installs it on the device. Some more changes uh, uh, in regards to debugging the protected VM. Uh, today, again, the bootloader helps load the uh, debug policy, which is actually a DTB overlay. Uh, it overlays the DTB onto the host DTB and also informs the PVM firmware that the VM instance that's going to be launched next would be debuggable. So it enables uh, ADB and console uh, helping debug the VM. Uh, what's coming up next? Uh, like Elliot mentioned, we have our patches being upstream right now. Our V15 would concentrate on mostly memory management for the guest. Uh, we want to control the guest memory through NFT. Also, dynamically grow the VM based on demand. Uh, we are also trying to work on KDUMP to improve debugging and extend DM communication to the firmware. We have quite a few challenges we are trying to solve. Uh, one of them I would like to mention is how we want to sanitize devices when the VM is no longer runnable. Uh, today, Peak KVM uses uh, EL2 modules. The device drivers are um, inserted into the PKVM, where PKVM takes over once the VM crashes to clean up the devices before it is handed over to the host. But Ganya doesn't uh, want to follow this model. Instead, we are heading towards having a more privileged, secure VM, which would uh, run after the VM, clean up the devices on behalf before it returns to the host. Yeah, these are the references for uh, some of the topics we spoke about. Um, and yeah, thanks for the opportunity to explain our experience here. Making us into football stars. Uh, so you said that you boot into another secure virtual machine to clean up the device status before you give it back to the host. The, uh, why that approach versus, I guess, PKVM does something else? Yeah, they are using What's, why is the reason EL2 for... modules. Yeah, they are, PKVM is planning to use EL2 modules. Um, yeah, Ganya doesn't want to have any uh, device driver in them. Any module support in the yeah. Okay, hyper. So. Yeah, oh. we wanted to keep it as thin as possible. So. Oh. Uh, one of the mysteries I had about K PKVM that I couldn't figure out is how it protects the guests from the host. Um, and eventually it was explained to me that eventually what happens is um, the actual PKVM will sort of um, panic if the host try to access the guest. How does Gunya treat that? It's, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's basically the same thing. Um, PKVM all, so PKVM and Gunya both just unmap that memory from the host's memory. And so they are the same. So the question is, what happens if the host will get counted? Oh, so you get a stage two fault. And uh, if, depending on what kind of access it was, the kernel could panic. Uh, you know, if it's kernel trying to access the memory, if it's user space, it's, uh, I think, sig like bus. Yeah. So, yeah. So a lot of the upstreaming work, just so you know, is, is trying to figure out what's the right way to make sure that the kernel can't panic yeah. on that. So, yeah. <laughs> Are there any limitations in PKVM that necessitate building uh, this on top of Genya for Qualcomm? Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> so the, the question was, um, why did we build Genya on top of PKVM? Why build APX support on top of PKVM as opposed to? Just switching to PKVM. Just right, yeah. So um, I guess. From our perspective, we want to try and support one hypervisor and not yeah. more than one. Um, so we've been doing Ganya for four years, which is 
longer than PKVM has existed. Um, we have a few different other use cases that we want to try and support that AVF doesn't want to really care about, um, which I think is we, fine. Yeah, we actually already support um, QCVMs, or uh, we have been supporting for the past four years. So AVF was just an addition for us. So we wanted to continue with yeah. Kanya. Auto was, yeah, one of. Oh, what do you have? On auto? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, auto was is one of the use cases that uh, Ganya is running on today. And uh, we do not have the Linux trust chain there. So we do need Ganya. Yeah, you mentioned the EL2 scheduling. I'm curious to find out more about that and the complexity of having the scheduling code at EL2. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a simple time slice uh, scheduling that happens. Uh, these are mostly for critical VMs, which need to exist uh, and run irrespective of how uh, the host is, uh, how much pressure the host is handling. So yeah, we have some use cases we are running today, which schedules in into. Yeah, but it's just a simple time sliced scheduler. My question was quite similar. I mean, with PKVM, they use the kernel scheduler to schedule everything. And for you, because you are completely out of uh, the kernel, which kind of scheduling and how do you handle all these task placement, frequency scaling, which is quite, I mean, complex. FVMs are using what we call proxy scheduling, which is what you guys are used to with the PKVM, where um, the where Linux will donate vCPU cycles uh, to another VM. Um, and so for us, we call that proxy scheduling because you're donating the rest of your slice, your time slice to the other VM. Um, but yeah, so does that answer your question? So I guess, I guess the answer is uh, the problems you guys are facing are the same things we're going to be facing for AVF VMs. Um, so we're interested in figuring out how you guys want to, you know, collaborating on solving those problems. I'm kind of confused. Um, wouldn't you still need proper scaling inside the VM? Whether it's uh, Gunny or PKVM, that's like, I don't understand how you're saying you wouldn't run into the problems. And then the other part of the question is just for my understanding, we're saying in Gunny, a VM can forcefully steal CPU from the host? Gunny would schedule the VM. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like without the host giving up, you're yeah. like, okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah, those two questions. Uh, I guess the first question, why, you would have the same problems. Why do you say you wouldn't? Yeah, we would have the same problem, is what he said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are almost done. No. I have a question. Do you want to use PKVM? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.